of the Lord, His hand is mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. I am blessed of the Lord, His hand is mighty upon me, and no weapon fashioned against me, they shall never prosper. Godly children we are Never defeated, always winning We're living in fear of God Pray, child, godly children we are Never defeated, always winning We're living in fear of God like the holy plan round about your table, children are the heritage of God. I am seeking first the kingdom of God, because I am a preacher. I got to pray just to I am day. a preacher. I am a preacher. I am a preacher. I am a preacher. Yes, I have to pray. I am a preacher. Yes, I have to I am a preacher. Jesus God, my heart. I am a preacher. afternoon god bless you welcome 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 to daily prayer for our children thank you for joining as always wherever it is that you are joining from i like to welcome you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit hope you've been having a fantastic day and it, as always if your day is just started may it be glorious and if your day is coming to an end i hope uh you've enjoyed it and uh, if you're going to bed, like some of us might be, I hope you have a wonderful sleep. But just before we go, we're going to declare a word or two into the lives of our children, uh, resources that I believe are essential for the soul to help them to live that godly life that God is asking them to live. So if you're meeting us for the very first time, this is Daily Prayer for Our Children. 
we gather online Monday to Friday to declare the word of God into the life of our sons, our daughters, our niece, our nephew, grandchildren, foster children, adopted children, even generations that are yet to be born. We declare the word into their lives so that we see them as seed that will begin to sow and bear fruit day by day in the name of Jesus. Um, sometimes you will see the names of our children scrolling on your screen. If you do not yet have the names of your children or any children you want to include on that list that you want to, you can do that by DMing us, DMing, or DM us on Instagram, please. And we will endeavor to add the name of the children that you want onto that list. Okay, it is another glorious day and we are grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ for giving us the enablement to be able to gather. So let's speak to the Father first. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to gather together in your name again today. Father, we do not take you for granted because we know that the life that we have is in you. The breath that we're using to breathe comes from you. The ability to move has all come from you. To do all that we do, it's all from you. And so, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for this day and every day that you give to us. Thank you for the children that you have entrusted into our care. Thank you for considering us worthy to be able to look after your heritage. And so, Father, as we gather together in your name again today, we ask that you be in our midst according to your word that says wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there. We ask that you lead us. We ask that you guide us. We ask that you open our eyes of understanding to see, to hear, to perceive and to understand as you will want us to in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All the PCC family out there, God bless you. Good to have you on board. And as always, if you are meeting us for the very first time, please do feel free to message us, say hi. Just let us know where it is that you're joining us from, and we'll get to. We'd like to get to know you better. Okay, so we are. In the book of Peter, please be patient with Brother Peter or Apostle Peter or the Chief Apostle, whatever it is that you refer to him as. Um, we are in biblical living, so to say, for our children as we start this new year, how they need to live. And because we know that this Christian journey cannot be done on our own, it cannot be done by our own power look you know the adamic nature which we inherited naturally is wicked uh, jeremiah says the heart of man is deep and is full of wickedness who can possibly know it so we need the enablement of god our sons and daughters need the enablement of god to be able to live this life as they ought to especially with the amount of challenges that is facing them today the amount of uh, peer pressure, pressure generally, social media pressure, um, 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 expectations, high expectations, and all sorts of things that they've been bombarded with. And here you and I are, oh, read your Bible, pray, uh, be a child of God, be spirit-filled, and all that kind of thing. It can be quite overwhelming and daunting. Uh, for young people and that's why I'm saying mom and dad let's hold their hands and let's walk through this journey together let's not leave any one of them behind you know it's interesting I was li listening to uh, uh, a renowned uh, yeah very famous uh, after all 15 Grammys well um, the only one with 15 Grammys apparently and uh, she doesn't even sing uh, what they call secular music and she has 15 Grammys under her belt. I was listening to one of her talk show the other day and she was making reference to something that somebody said. Mom and dad, please take note of this. I'm going to be posting it out very soon. She said the person says that what you make optional 
what you make optional today will become obsolete tomorrow. This is me paraphrasing, by the way, because I can't remember the exact quote. Um, if I probably check my, uh, where I normally put all my stuff, I might be, I might be able to find it and I'll just read it for us. It says what you and I make optional today, it will become obsolete tomorrow. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. What we make optional, the next generation would deem it as unnecessary. Wow. That hit me like a ton of brick. I couldn't have articulated it better. She said what we, mom and dad, parents, this present generation of parents, what we make optional for our children, our children and the generations coming behind them, the subsequent generation will deem it as unnecessary. Don't fall into that danger, mom and dad. Because we're seeing it all around us, especially if you're in diaspora. Look at the diaspora where you are. Look around you. See how many churches are closing. See how many churches are already closed. See how many or how few people are going to their local assembly for uh, fellowship now. So many of the historic uh, church buildings in UK are being sold off. Because the numbers are no longer there filling the pews. And I remember having this conversation with an elderly woman about five years ago. She and her husband were still in the faith and going to church. We said their children are nowhere to be seen. And I said to her, I said, that's because you never passed on the baton. Because what they did was they made it optional. Honestly, mom and dad, we don't look, like to hear things like this, you know. We like to hear that, oh, I just allow my children to choose and then it just worked out fine. <laughs> really? Everybody and anybody that I have known that has succeeded in taking their children along on this journey and has managed to successfully pass the baton on to the next generation... It was not because they made it optional. It was intentional on the side of the parents. It was not optional. It was intentional on the side of the parents. And that's what I'm advocating for, that you be very intentional. I spoke about this last month, last year. It sounds it sounds really big deal, but it was only last month when... Uh, we were coming to the end of the year, that in 2023, pass on the faith. Pass on the baton of faith. Leave a spiritual legacy for your children. Everything else you leave for them, it will evaporate. It will disappear. Peter or Paul, I'm not sure, but I think it's Paul. He says, everything that we see is temporal. Where everything we do not see is eternal. You cannot see the spiritual investment or uh, growth or whatever it is that we're doing in the life of our children right now. But that's because it's eternal. But you see those shoes, those education, those college, car, house, land, business. We can see them. They're tangible. The tangible things will perish and disappear. Remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees about their great temple? He says, not one stone will remain on top of the other one. So mom and dad, I want to encourage us. The year is still very fresh. This is only the fifth or sixth day or what day. I don't know what day is going to be uh, exactly. But whatever day it is, I'm saying, please. Put more effort, be more intentional about the spiritual growth of your sons, your daughters, your niece, your nephew. Hence the reason you and I have been spending this amount of time looking at 
uh, biblical living, we started by, you know, get rid of hypocrisy, get rid of deceit, get rid of all these kind of things out of our lives. Why? Because our children need to live godly lives. So come with me, mom and dad, as we go into today's session. I pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us as we commence in the name of Jesus. Again, as you can see, we are in the book of Peter. Um, and you would already have seen the session I did or might not, but it is there. If you want to see, you'll find it there already on that channel. It's a continuation of where we were the last time. And we're in verse 9. It says, our children are not to repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate. Don't retaliate with insult when people insult you. Can you see that? And it says, instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do. And he will grant you his blessing. Wow. Mom and dad, I know this is a tall order. Let me go for an option where I can put myself behind, beside the screen. Don't repay evil for evil. Again, mom and dad. <laughs> in this day and time that we're in. Oh, you kick me, I kick you. You push me, I push you. I keep saying this. The Bible says one thing, the world is saying something else. Many of the times we want to defend ourselves. We want to avenge ourselves. The Bible doesn't permit us to do this. The natural flesh, the natural body, remember, our journey is a strife between the spirit and the flesh. The flesh wants to retaliate. The flesh wants to give it as good as it got. The Bible says, don't repay evil for evil. And as to the definition of evil, mom and dad, I think we all know what evil is. Our children know what evil is. So none of us, without a shadow of a doubt, can say that we do not know what evil, what constitutes evil. It says we should not retaliate with insult when people insult us. Wow. Especially our children. I don't know. I want to say maybe predominantly in secondary school, but I don't even know what primary school is like today. But I've heard some children. Wow. Have I heard some children in secondary school? Wow. The vulgar of their language. The harshness, the hardness. Wow. And I've heard some stories of some children who are supposed to come from Christian homes that you and I take to church. Wow. The things they do, the things they say. How mean and intimidating they are. How nasty they can be and very vindictive. Mom and dad. Be vigilant. So, you know, they, they come as, you know, saint, innocent, quiet in our cars, in our home, in our church pews. Hmm. May the Lord open our eyes of understanding to see our children as they truly are. And that's why I so love that discussion the young people had on Tuesday in the Bible study. What does it mean to honor our parents? And one young lady says, it means the way we conduct ourselves even when our parents are not there. Many parents will be horrified if you were to see and hear some of the things your children do, how they treat another student, how they treat another human being, how they treat an elder, how they speak. You'll be shocked to say that is your child. Mom and dad, the Bible says they are not to pay, repay evil for evil. They are not to retaliate insult when, ins when they are insulted. This is so hard. 
That's why Jesus talks about this in the book of Matthew chapter 5. I don't know whether we'll get there, but let's see. So somebody insult them. They Please note, um, the Bible is talking about what other people is doing to them. How they are to respond. So when somebody has been mean to our children, when somebody has been nasty to our children, our children have got to go, they've got to find that strength within themselves to rise above that nastiness, to rise above that insult, to rise above that evil and be the better person. Wow, mom and dad, I don't know about you, but it takes a lot of strength to do that. Unless you have attained it, you know, and you're more spiritual than me and your children. Especially some of us that have been, we are married, been married, <laughs> or just started married life. Oh, we're finding it, you know, we're learning that lesson in a quick and tough way. You can't believe that the person that you fell in love with, the person you were lovey-dovey with, the person that promised can do or say the magnitude of what's, what's coming out of their mouth. But on my side, on the side of our children, the Bible says they've got to rise above it. They cannot retaliate. They cannot re insult. They cannot give as good as they get. And the Bible is not even asking them to walk away, mom and dad. The Bible does tell them what to do. This is why I say our children need our help. Our children need our help. Because if you can look inside of you and think how hard, what a struggle, what a challenge. And that's what we're going to be praying about. It is for you to rise above insult, rise above um, criticism on 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 due criticism rise above um ridicule mockery it takes the will of god it takes the strength of god it takes knowing who you are to be able to rise above that and thank god for the indwelling of the holy spirit because that's what he does because in that moment when your flesh would have kicked in when you are very um uh, what's that my husband's favorite scripture? Uh, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. When the word of God has been dwelling in you richly. You see when that person comes and do that thing or say that thing. And the natural flesh. If we are still allowing the works of the flesh to rule us. What he's going to want to do naturally is to retaliate. But if the word of God is dwelling in us richly, when we see Galatians chapter 5, I think from verse 21 or 22, we begin to see the fruit of the spirit coming out. Like we saw in the previous scripture that we look at, being gentle, being patient, being humble, being tender hearted. Look. Charity does begin at home, mom and dad. Charity does begin at home. If they can be tender-hearted at home, if they cannot retaliate at home, if they can be mindful of one another at home, mom and dad, that is the training ground they can carry out into the open world, into the big wild world. And I'm saying help them. Help them to live this godly life that the word of God is asking them to live. They cannot pay evil back with evil. They cannot retaliate. Many of the genocides. Is it the one that Hitler did? Is it the Rwanda genocide? All sorts of genocides. It's all stemming from hatred. We are not allowed to hate as children of God. As Christians, the Bible is expecting somebody offend us and we are supposed to 
quench that that flame as quickly as we can. We're not supposed to let it linger. But the 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 flesh, the flesh that's not being subdued. <laughs> I, I think it's John Prescott. You can Google it. I'm sure it's probably on YouTube. He was, I think, the vice prime minister at the time. And somebody pelted him with an egg. And he hit out at the person. And all the cameras carried it. You and I can't do that. The Bible doesn't allow that. For whatever the reason, the Bible says, don't do it. Mom and dad, it takes an inner strength to be able to do that. It takes the will of God to be able to do that. It takes the, the grace of God to be able to do what our children is being asked to do. But somebody has to remind them that's how they ought to live. That's what makes us stand out. That's what makes us different from the rest of the world. Let me share my scripture with you again. Because I want us to look at Matthew. It says, instead, another word from my husband, the instead of God. And that instead is, instead of retaliation, instead of uh, uh, vengeance, instead of repaying, the Bible says, you pay them back with a blessing. Wow. <laughs> you know, one of the scriptures that we're very familiar with in the gospel is where Jesus says, somebody slap you on one cheek, you turn the other one. You know, that kind of thing. Well, somebody is insulting you. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible says, bless them. And guess what? Look, it's not guess. Look at what the Bible says. Look at why the Bible said we need to bless them. It said that is what God has called our children to do. This is all about God. This is all about him. This is all about his kingdom. This is all about our soul. This is all about salvation. This is all about where we spend eternity. If we can't live like this here, then we can't live in eternity. Because there's no strife, there's no malice, there's no anger, there's no sorrow where we're going. It doesn't exist there. So we've got to tame all those here. We've got to subdue the flesh here. We've got to relinquish all those evil here. And every day as we are running that race and we're striving towards the finished goal. I think it's in Hebrew chapter 12. It says, let go of every sin that so easily besets us. Mom and dad. It says, one, we pay them back with a blessing. And two, it said that's what God is expecting from us. And he says, God wants to bless you for doing what God wants us to do. It's a blessing for blessing somebody that hurt me. <laughs> the Bible says it, uh, 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 it's a blessing for blessing somebody that insulted me. The Bible says it's a blessing for, uh, um, for not getting angry, for not retaliating, for not, um, what more could I possibly say? Shedding, uh, uh, well, well, it doesn't say we can't cry, so it's okay to cry. Oh, sorry, everybody. Um, let me do this. I want to, I wanted to share another scripture with us. Um, I think I am there, Matthew chapter 5. Yes, Matthew chapter 5. Let's go there. Let's have a look. We are all very familiar with this scripture, and thank God it is in red. This is Jesus speaking. I love my red letters because I, I like I've said before, you hear my red, you see my red letter. That's Jesus. It's not debatable. It's not up for contention. It says, "But I say to you, love your enemies." Again, that thing I'm saying. The Bible says one thing. The world says another. In the world where you and I and our children are living, somebody do you wrong, you cross them off. 
you cross them off. You remove their phone, you block them on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. You're very childish. You know, you, you block their phone number, blocker, blocker. You block them. The Bible says, no, as a child of God, that's not what you do. So the word of God is constantly asking us to live against the grain, walk against the grain, walk against the lump. The norm says you retaliate. God says, no, the, the world say you hate your enemy. Jesus says, no, you love your enemy and you pray for those that persecute you. He says, so that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven. He says, this is how the world will know you belong to me. This is how the world will know you are children of the most high God. We are to show forth the goodness of God in the land of the living. We are to show forth the marvelous work of God. That's what Peter says. It's not optional, mom and dad. That's why our children need us to walk this journey with them. We need to be the mentor. We need to be the example on a daily basis that they can look up to and say, my mom can do it, I can do it. My grandma can do it, I can do it. My dad is doing it, I'm going to be able to do it. And when I feel weak, my dad is going to hold my hand, he's going to see me through, he's going to encourage me. When I get hurt outside, I can go home because I know there'll be comfort in my home. The apostles did the same thing in the book of Acts. The Bible said whenever they were beaten and whatever, it says they will go back to their own company mom and dad look at what jesus said and they will pray it says so that you may be the son of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and he sends rain on the just and the unjust for if you love those who love you what reward do you have none Siphony. Let me, let me give a quick translation to what Jesus just said there. Oh, I love my grandma because my grandma loves you. No reward. There's no reward. That's what Jesus said. Oh, my aunt loves me. She does this for me. She's always this. Okay. Jesus said, what reward? For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Oh, I love my children because my children love me. Clap for yourself. When we are able to love those that hate us, when we're able to love those that despise us, when we are able to love those that persecute us, when we're able to love those that, that speak evil of us, when we're able to love those that are always antagonizing us, when they're always putting us down and mocking us and demeaning us and speaking with us with condescension, the Bible says we are the true sons and daughters of our father. Mom and dad, it is not by power, neither is it by might. The Bible says it is by the spirit. The enablement of God, that's what we're going to be praying for for our children. He say, do not even the tax collectors do the same. The tax collectors were seen like the scumbag of the world at that time. So even if the scumbag of the world can, you know, love those that love them, the, you and I are not any different. Remember, we are being, we are the call out ones. We are called out to be different. We are called out to show forth the goodness of him. We are called out to be the light in the midst of darkness and perversion. Remember the twisted and perverted generation we were looking at a few days ago? And he says, and if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? We are expected to go beyond and above. Isn't it interesting in most work that we go to or when we're making application and we're feeling the criteria or the qualities that we have, they want to know the person that will go beyond and above. They want to know the one that will prioritize things, say team player, you know, will, will, even though work is closing at five, but they haven't finished something and they say patient or they say uh, uh, um, 
client waiting that you wait that extra minute somebody that will go beyond and many of us will gladly do that because we want our boss to notice us we want our company to know that you know so that the bonus and the promotion but no jesus is also watching god is also watching and he says no 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 that's not the way you live as a child of god he's asking our children to live completely different from the world it says, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? It says the Gentiles do the same. So what big deal? There's no big deal in it. So when we love those that love us, sorry, when we love those that love us, I don't know what I've done, but I've done something and messed up my screen. When we love those that love us and, um, okay, I think I've sorted it out. When we love those that love us and we only uh, give attention to those people that do things for us, just bear with me, please. I've lost uh, my screen. Wow, well, I've lost a lot of things. It's not just my screen. It says when we do that, the Bible says what we're doing is not any different from anybody else. The Bible says we are not different from anybody else. It said, but we need to be different. Sorry, I'm trying to bring that scripture up because I pressed something and I lost um, everything in the process. So just bear with me as I bring up that scripture again um, in the book of Peter where we are. That's First Peter, First Peter chapter 3 we are in and we were looking, I believe, in verse 9. So let me just bring it up and then we begin to pray. Mom and dad, so we know exactly what it is that we're praying for. Look, the the... The cherry on the cake in this scripture for me, let me share it with you. The cherry on the cake in this scripture, mom and dad, is that the Bible says there is a blessing. God blesses our children. He will grant you his blessing. It says this is what God has called them to do. This is what God has called me to do. This is what he's called you to do. Normally, we don't get... Re, um, we get reward. What do we get reward for? We get reward for being good. We get reward for being nice. We get reward for doing the things that is expected of us. In fact, I like another translation. It says something like we will inherit a blessing for taking insult and not retaliating. For uh, being slapped on the face and not slapping back for being um, rejected and disgraced and disrespected and we're not retaliating back. Wow. Many other times, mom and dad, when we love, we love for our own sake. We love for our own benefit. We love because there is a gain in it for us, because there is something for it in there for us. The Bible says, no, when there is nothing in there for me. Again, another key principle as a child of God, because remember the Bible also says in the gospel, it says when, when we do party, when we do banquet or a feast, we should not call our neighbors because they will call us back. It says we should go and call the poor, the people on the street, the people that can't feed themselves, so those kind of thing. It says because those ones will not be able to call us back to the same kind of thing. That's where the blessing is. That's where the reward is. So when we are loving the unlovables, when we are patient with those that are not patient, that they are, they are not people that want, people can be patient with, when we are tolerant of people that are not tolerable, the Bible says there is a blessing in it. And that is what I want for our sons and daughter. Mom and dad, let us pray. Again, I'm going to put it on the screen so that we can be reminded exactly what it is that we're praying for. We're praying that they will not retaliate. We're praying that they will not revenge. We're praying that they will not... Um, they will not repay evil for evil, but instead they will pay back with a blessing. They will pay, 
pay back with good. Now, I, I, I'm hearing within my head, in my mind, that, so how do I do that? How do I, how do I pay back for somebody that insults me? How do, I can't go deep into that. Maybe if somebody does bring up that question, that might be another uh, hangout session another time. But you know, when somebody slapped me in a situation, disgraced me in a situation, how do I undo that? How does a child undo that? How do I overcome that in a crowd when somebody is insulting me? When so, I mean, I think of recently, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't really watch it. I heard more about it than I saw. I think Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Grammy Award. He's going to be in the archive for life. I don't remember Chris Rock slapping back. I don't think he did. I don't know even if it's a slap or a hit, but I know some sort of altercation took place. I don't know whether Chris Rock is a Christian. No, so please don't quote me. I'm not saying it because he's a Christian. It's just one that readily comes to mind. So let us pray, mom and dad. What is our prayer? The enablement. The enablement for our sons and our daughters not to retaliate in the name of Jesus. Father, we present every one of our children before you again today in the mighty name of Jesus. We know it's not by power. We know it's not by might. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, in all our ways we shall acknowledge you. The strength to be able to walk away, Father, we ask that you give to our children in the name of Jesus. When people hit them, when people insult them, when people demean them, Lord. Father, we ask for the strength to be a child of God. The enablement to be a child of God. That they would demonstrate the love of God that is on the inside of them in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible said they have been called to be like Jesus. That they should walk in the full step of Jesus. And the Bible did not tell us that those shoes were, were, are easy to step into. Those footsteps are not easy to, to walk in. But Father, we are asking for the enablement for our sons and our daughters in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will be able to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said when he was hit, he didn't hate. When he was insulted, he wasn't insulted. And likewise, you've asked us to live a life just like that. Lord, enable our children to live like Christ in the name of Jesus. Give them the strength, Lord, to overcome the anger that might swell or well up on the inside of them when somebody antagonizes them in the name of Jesus. Give them the word in due season in the name of Jesus. Give them the word that will comfort them. Holy Spirit, we are asking that you will be there, that you will lead them, you will guide them in the name of Jesus. That you will diffuse every form of anger that might want to well up on the inside of them in the name of Jesus. That instead of retaliation, Lord, that our children will bless in the name of Jesus. Instead of word of anger, they will bless in the name of Jesus. Instead of using their fist, they will bless in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for your enablement in the life of these precious ones that you have entrusted into our care in the name of Jesus. That they will receive your enablement, they will receive your power. They will receive the strength in the name of Jesus to rise above that insult, to rise above that mockery, to rise above that ridicule in the mighty name of Jesus. That strength from nowhere will come upon them suddenly in that hour, in that moment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That they will demonstrate your love in that situation. That they will love those that hate them in the name of Jesus. They will love those that despite them and, uh, and use them in the name of Jesus. Father, we bring every son, every daughter, every niece, every nephew before your throne again today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child that is represented here, Father, we lift them up before the throne of grace. The blessing is the cherry on the cake. Thank God that there is a blessing when they do that. 
Thank God, thank you for the promise of that of that blessing that they will inherit when they when they when they when they return good for evil in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that reward that is awaiting our children in obedience in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray again that they will be able to put on Christ. That they will be able to show forth and demonstrate Christ in all their walks of life in the name of Jesus. In speech, in thought, in conduct, Lord, that they will demonstrate Christ in the name of Jesus. He said that is how the world will know. So that the world will know that they belong to you in the name of Jesus. And through their meekness, through their gentleness, through their good words and their, uh, uh, their kind repayment, Lord. And their good repayment and their blessing of repayment, Lord. That men will be drawn to you in the name of Jesus. You say, if we lift you up, you will draw all my all man or all men to yourself, Lord. That through the life of our, of these ones, Lord, that nations will be drawn to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and that reward that you have in store for them, Father, I pray that they will not miss in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for answered prayers in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen, Amen. And amen. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Truly, truly appreciate your time with us. We look forward to seeing you again. By the grace of God, if you can join us, like I say, we are here Monday to Friday. Please do leave comment uh, in the comment section if you can. And um, uh, help us to share the word. Um, you know, of what we do here, wherever it is that you're watching it from, because I don't know where you're going to be watching it from. People might actually share it with you. Uh, but please help us to spread the word. And we recently started something on Facebook, Instagram as well. Um, one, one minute, 60 seconds prayer on a daily basis. So you might not be able to sit down and watch all of this, but you can listen to that 60 minutes, uh, 60 minutes, wow, 60 seconds uh, prayer that we are sending out on a day-to-day -day basis. We've only just started, uh, so help us to share that one as well. Um, it's small enough to share in Instagram, 60, uh, 64 MB is what Instagram takes. This is a lot smaller than 64, so you can share it on your TikTok, you can share it on whatever it is that you, you know, you connect with all your people, you can share it there. So, and the Lord bless you as you do that. We look forward to uh, many more years together by the grace of God. So everybody, as always, I want to leave you in the most capable hands of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a wonderful day, morning or night, wherever you are, everybody. Take care. God bless you all and see you soon. <laughs>